Welcome back to another episode of the Mars Hydro SP250 and the Pepper Plant pH test. Today we're going to be talking about what's been going on since the last episode and what's going to be coming up in the final episodes. So since the last episode, I've actually changed over to the final growth phase in the nutrient solution from General Hydroponics, and that's basically just uh, one teaspoon per gallon of the Flora Micro, two teaspoons per gallon of the Flora Grow, and three teaspoons per gallon of the Flora Bloom. I actually mixed up the first two. I'll just throw a picture up here on the screen so you can see that, what it actually is. Uh, but anyways, that's what I switched over to. Um, and I've actually already changed out these uh, containers once since then. So this is the second time I've actually um, put that solution in there. I've been very carefully monitoring the pH and making sure that the pH is exactly where it needs to be. Uh, and just for reference, in case anyone was wondering, the container here on the left, that's a 6.5. Container in the middle is a 5.5. The container on the end is a 7.5. Um, so far, there is no difference between any of these plants. I can't tell them apart from each other. The leaves all look the same. It's not showing any particular deficiencies of any kind. They're all growing peppers fairly well. Um, and you can see the two end containers have actually removed the wood because these two plants in the end containers have actually caught up in height to the one that was in the middle there. This is all the same height now. Uh, I've actually been keeping the light adjusted and I've been keeping the uh, intensity at the center of each canopy about 550 micromole or so and then I've recently moved the light up increased the wattage to its max output which is 230 watts and now that's giving me at this distance about 700 micromoles at each one of these plant tops right in the middle of the canopy um, so they've been growing fairly well and you can see down at the bottom here actually let me adjust the camera a little bit they're all growing peppers very nicely you know I could probably count these peppers and say, oh yeah, this one's growing more, this one's growing more or less or whatever. Uh, but just looking at it, not really seeing much of a difference. They're all growing about the same. Uh, at the last video is what we're gonna be doing, or probably just the last video. You're gonna be seeing a time lapse of this, the grow of the whole thing. Um, we're gonna be tasting the peppers, obviously. We're gonna be counting them and weighing them. We're gonna be looking at the roots, we're gonna be smelling the roots, we're gonna be doing everything. Um, Anything that I may have forgotten to mention in this episode or the previous episodes that may have something to do with what you want to see, go ahead and leave a comment down below uh, and then I'll consider doing that for the final episode. Um, I've had some people comment saying that they want me to do more specific pH ranges and stuff like that, but the problem is, is that when you mix up the solution and put it in a container for a plant to use, that pH can change almost instantaneously. I mean, not by a whole uh, a whole bunch, but it could change from, uh, you know, like 5.5 to 5.6 to 5.7, just almost instantaneously, based on whatever the roots have stuck on them, if you don't rinse them off. Um, but no one really rinses their roots off when they're changing, changing the solution. What I'm doing here is more of just a real world test. Um, even just by a day, just by sitting in a container for a day, the pH can change quite a bit. So anyone who wants to do very specific points, the only way you could do that and keep the pH exact in a very exact number the entire time, when it's only like say 5.5 between or 5.6 or 5.7, that's practically impossible. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is under very scientifically controlled lab conditions and having a, a um, an automated feeder that basically constantly adjusts the pH and that really isn't even practical. Um, so what I'm doing here is basically just, uh, I got two containers, uh, the one that's the 6.5, that, that one, and the one that's the 5.5, that one. Um, those are both very realistic pH conditions for most people who mix up a nutrient solution. The one in the end there, the pH of 7.5, the only way you're ever gonna get a pH of 7.5 is if you have very hard water, a lot of calcium carbonate or whatever in your water to get that pH that high. I mean, you really wouldn't want to grow in the water like that anyways, hydroponically. But as soon as you add the nutrient solution to it, in most cases, if it's the stuff you purchase and don't make yourself, and you, they're basically designed to keep the pH uh, just slightly acidic. So it takes a lot of effort to actually m increase the pH above neutral. Because uh, naturally the pH is going to drop anyways 
just by sitting there when the water evaporates and gets absorbed by the plants and what you're left over with is a higher concentration. So your pH is just gonna go down, it's never gonna go up. So that's why we're only doing one container that's a higher pH um, above neutral because it's very unrealistic for that to even happen. But looking at it though, if you look at all these plants, you can't really tell them apart. The leaves aren't showing any signs of deficiencies whatsoever. They're growing the same amount of flowers, as far as I can tell just by looking at them, same amount of peppers. Um, wasn't Maybe it wasn't quite the same when I grew the lettuce in the different pH. Um, that video will be up here if you haven't seen it. But uh, in this case, we're not really looking at foliage so much because you don't eat pepper plant leaves. Uh, we're mostly gonna be looking at the peppers themselves. Um, because obviously right now it's not showing deficiencies, but the production is what we're really interested in. So we're gonna be looking at that mainly. Um, also here is a picture I'll throw up on the screen. I took, uh, right before I changed out the solutions in each container, I dumped out the solution um, to look at the color of it. And here in the picture you can see on the left hand side that is the 5.5 pH, the middle one is 6.5, and the end, and the one on the right is 7.5. You can see the color differences. So what it looks like to me on the picture where it's uh, 5.5, so it's fairly acidic, the color is almost clear. And that tells me that the more acidic plant is absorbing more nutrients, or at least some type of nutrient. To where the one that's um, higher pH, it's not really absorbing a, a lot of something. It's, it's really hard to tell, this is just an observation. Um, anyway, so, yeah, that's about it for this video. Before you go though, we're actually going to be doing um, a grow with a banana plant, not hydroponically, but I wanted to show you this real quick. So let me get the camera over to where I got the banana plant growing. So this is a blue java, or AKA ice cream banana tree. Uh, I just got this actually off of Amazon not too long ago. And it looks kind of terrible. That's just because these were the leaves that, um, that were clipped uh, before they, you know, before they transplanted it in shipping. Uh, this here is the new leaf coming out. So all these old leaves here, these are gonna die off anyways, but um, this, this new leaf grew out uh, after I transplanted it into this pot in about two or three days. It came out just out of nowhere and just opened up. Um, these things really suck up the water. Now, if you're interested in banana plants at all, if you wanna grow them, the soil that I really, really like to use is ProMix. Uh, for potted plants. Uh, the other tr banana tree I'm growing upstairs is actually, uh, that was a dwarf Cavendish, and it, that's all I potted in it was ProMix, and it's growing great in it. Uh, but you do have to fertilize properly. So if you are gonna fertilize a banana plant, I recommend the banana uh, tree fertilizer from Wellsprings Gardens. Um, get that off of Amazon. Basically, it's uh, twice the amount of potassium as there is nitrogen in it. So don't use miracle Grow. I've had bad luck with that, but I'm gonna talk about that maybe in another video. I just wanted to show this because this is supposed to be uh, bananas that taste kind of like ice cream, I guess. Uh, I've looked online for them. If you wanna buy a banana, they're really expensive. You just wanna taste one. So I'm deciding to grow my own, and I'm probably gonna be using uh, a grow light from Hidden Harvest Grow Lights to grow this banana tree. Now this will get about probably eight feet in the container that I have it in now, maybe. Uh, but this is not a dwarf by any means, this does grow pretty tall. But if I keep it in a small container, it will actually stay small or can only grow so big. We'll see how it works out. But anyways, I just wanted to show that if anyone was interested in following along with this, uh, I probably will post a video or two about it in the future. So before we go and end this episode, I think in the next episode, we might be tasting a pe one pepper from each plant. So we got some grown that are getting pretty much to their adult size, right, not adult size, but full size. We got that one there. Um, there is a couple over on this one, and there is you no know, one down here. Um, although, you know, they're, they're not, they're not all like to their max size that they can get, but uh, probably by the next episode, they will be large enough to where they can be considered pretty much fully grown. So I will be tasting one. And in the background, what I will be doing is cutting these off, 
because we're gonna wait, we're gonna get more growth on the top here in order to do that. We're gonna have to trim these off so that we can encourage more production. But what I am gonna do is count them and weigh them and keep a tally of it uh, just to see the overall production throughout this whole process. So that is it for this episode. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.